In 2012, the planet generated nearly 49 million tonnes of e-waste. And by 2017, that figure is expected to rise to around 65 million tonnes per year. So e-waste is clearly a growing problem. But new EU laws introduced on the 14th of February now force countries to recycle at least 45% of their e-waste and make it more difficult to export it illegally to the developing world. At the moment, a significant amount of this stuff ends up in Southeast Asia and West Africa to be picked apart by workers, often children, in really dangerous conditions. David Reed picks up the trail of this illegal e-waste in Ghana. Recycling West Africa style. Consumer electronics smashed, sorted and the valuable metals extracted. This is Agboglossi, Accra, where technology goes to die. Workers here are smelting, feeding fires with TV casings and fridge interiors, a heat fierce enough to burn the insulation off electrical cables. So what are you looking for when you're doing this? When I'm doing this, I'm looking for copper. A fingertip search through the ashes gleaned scraps of metal that are then sold on. Take home pay between five and seven euros. <coughs> <coughs> The men and boys working here, and they range between 13 and 35 years old. They're not from Accra, they come from the north of the country, and they came here on a sort of gold rush, promised riches from waste. But the riches turned out to be a pittance, and the gold turned out to be lead, cadmium, and other heavy metals lodged in their bodies and slowly poisoning them. Uh, we have problems. Because you, if you didn't bath, or maybe if you bath finish, it will just be pain in your body, unless you get some, unless you get some medicine. Hanan is just 17 years old, taking medicine to work in an environment so toxic that even some of the boys here refuse to touch the river running through the site. And you could see the smoke also. The smoke is also travelling. At any place that it deposits these heavy metals or this, the people there can be contaminated. The, the soil itself, the soil itself you could see is hugely contaminated just by your sight. Time to leave Agboblosi and head with Vincent to Ghana's Atomic Energy Commission. The lab has performed a battery of tests on soil from the site. They found cadmium 30 times over acceptable levels. It can cause cancer, kidney failure, bone disease. Levels of lead, which attacks the nervous system, topped 100 times the recommended maximum dose. You wouldn't live here? I would not advise anybody to live there. Meanwhile, this place has been classified as one of the most pollutant or contaminated sites in the world. The processing at Agboblosi is fed by the illegal traffic of e-waste into Ghana. Today, used TVs from Australia and Spain are being loaded onto waiting trucks. There's nothing wrong with importing used tech if it works. If it doesn't, it's hazardous e-waste and it shouldn't be here. So how many of these TVs actually work? And they all work? Yeah, they, they all function? Yeah. Yeah. Well, 99% are working. 100%? About 99. 99%. <laughs> How big is 1%? How big is 1%? <laughs> very, very small. Ghana is working on legislation to prevent illegal e-waste imports, but it's taking time as legislators don't want to curb the legitimate trade in used tech. We do have some of the equipment that functions when it is imported into the country. So what um, the drafters are seeking to do is to ensure that they don't uh, end up preventing the valuable trade in use uh, electric and electronic equipment. In the meantime, young men and boys will continue to stoke the fires at Agboblosi and pay a heavy price with their health for a handful of change.